I think the main point is that um, uh, despite very successful antiviral treatment, which is prolonging people's survival and quality of life, uh, we still see quite a few people with mild cognitive impairment, and by that we mean people who have trouble with memory, concentration, mm -hmm. um, planning, uh, complex uh, mm -hmm. sort of mental activities. Mm -hmm. And it seems that this may reflect the persisting effect of HIV on the brain. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're trying to let people recognize is that the brain is another organ that can be impacted by HIV. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's very important to our quality of life and mm -hmm. uh, what we're able to do. There are a couple of factors. Uh, first of all, um, in terms of the treatment of HIV itself, uh, it's becoming increasingly apparent that some of the ARVs are better penetrating into the brain than others. Mm -hmm. And so I think as this field of knowledge evolves, it may be that people will be able to prescribe more effectively, particularly in people who are suffering some of these cognitive mm -hmm. impairments. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second point is um, cofactors that uh, these cognitive impairments in HIV can be made worse by alcohol and drug abuse. And so to the extent people are uh, using these things in immoderation, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think if they uh, curtailed that, they don't have to be teetotalers maybe, mm -hmm. but, um, but uh, reducing the use of these drugs mm -hmm. uh, can be very helpful. Um, you know, and another factor is to be sure one is tested for hepatitis C. That is sometimes a co-infection, particularly in people who are injection drug users. And the treatment of hepatitis C uh, would then perhaps lessen the likelihood of this HIV-associated cognitive impairment mm -hmm. as well. So those are three examples of at least medical uh, uh, conditions that uh, could be addressed. In terms of exercise, uh, nutrition, you know, I certainly believe in those things, but I think the data are not there mm -hmm. to say that if you exercised, uh, you know, <clears throat> moderately, your um, HIV cognitive impairment would improve. I, I can't say that. I can't say it's wrong, mm -hmm. but I can't mm -hmm. say it's true either. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't been looked at closely enough. Uh, is there anything else? I mean, the, the thing that I, I care mostly about is people um, having good information and also maybe, uh, maybe inspiring them to uh, encourage research in this area. Right. Well, I think one thing to say is that um, whereas it's true that some people have these cognitive impairments, that's not the end of the world either. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say the first step is that if someone is feeling that uh, their memory is not as good as it uh, was mm -hmm. before they became infected or uh, as time goes on or their concentration is going, that they ought to bring that to the attention of their doctor mm -hmm. and see uh, you know, whether this might or might not be HIV related. Mm -hmm. Might not be. People who get depressed have mm -hmm. trouble concentrating and remembering. Mm -hmm. And so maybe by treating a depression, uh, that would take care of the problem. Mm -hmm. So the point is to be mindful about it and uh, for the person to be alert and to seek some attention for those things. Uh, and then, of course, if one has these problems, uh, then uh, there are ways you can get around some of them. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if you know you're you forget to do certain things. Uh, you, you can't remember to remember very well, so you start making some notes, or do, uh, you uh, have other tricks that help you uh, cope with that. So, and and uh, eating, exercise, and, and sleep, and good sleep. That's a yeah. good point. You brought that up because there's actually pretty good data that people who don't get enough sleep or who have disrupted sleep have also mm -hmm. these milder cognitive type mm -hmm. problems. And of course, sleep is a restorative also to the immune system. Mm -hmm. So it, it all ties in together. It's, it should be very important in the yeah. field of in the, in the disease of HIV. Right. So um, with that in mind, um, how do people know? I mean, you, you said when people n re know that they're not remembering, and, yeah. and so to speak. Is this something one would be actually aware of, or is this something Sure, that I think many people are aware of yeah. that. And, um, you know, and that's uh, the circumstance under which, obviously, to bring it to uh, a doctor's attention. Mm -hmm. uh, other people may not be aware of it, but, but if they have close others, mm -hmm. they may point that out to them. And mm -hmm. that's another thing, you know, your audience can do, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if, if their partners or loved ones, uh, you know, seem to begin to be kind of a little more at loose ends yeah. to, mm -hmm. well, it won't be so serious as disorientation probably, mm -hmm. but just kind of not quite as sharp as they used to be for mm -hmm. whatever reason to, you know, maybe bring that to their attention. How are you doing? Uh, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, could it have anything to do with your HIV would be a good mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. So, 
Is there anything that you saw at the conference that you felt um, either uh, excited about or maybe concerned about? Well, the concern is always that, you know, there we still seem to have this long tunnel ahead of us in terms of uh, something curative uh, Just or something truly reach. preventive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the positive news is that these many different new approaches to treatment are really allowing people to live long lives, and productive mm -hmm. lives, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, such that people can talk about HIV as a chronic illness, but uh, I see the day that people will li live out their lifespan, mm -hmm. uh, and it won't be the uh, you know death sentence that it was certainly 20 years ago. Well, we learn a lot from the field of AIDS research yes. for other yes. people, uh, general population as well as other Particularly diseases. in the area of how inflammation interacts with neurological problems and there are many diseases that have this as a basis. Multiple sclerosis is one of them. It's mm -hmm. got nothing to do with HIV. Mm -hmm. But some of the processes appear to be similar, that there is mm -hmm. an abnormality in signaling of immune molecules and, mm -hmm. and this affects neurological functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, other viral diseases and um, even with um, some other autoimmune diseases uh, so, uh, such as lupus mm -hmm. uh, where mm -hmm. we see cognitive problems sometimes due to a uh, more of a vascular phenomenon, mm -hmm. but which have, has an immunologic basis. I, I think there are less, lessons to be learned from HIV. Mm -hmm.